And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Kassarian, and we are back in Automation, the Car Company Tycoon game. And today we are starting a new family car for our 1970 line. So, this vehicle is going to be called the Voyager. Unless I've used that name before, but I don't think I have. Nope. Alright. So let's look at what body styles we have. So this is a family car. Oh, this has some options to it now, don't it? Except these options don't have any textures, apparently. So this is going to be our larger family sedan, so I think we'll go with that model. We have the option for two-door. Okay, so yeah, we'll do that. All right, so we'll do our main size, which is this car. There we go. And are you a front engine? I think you're a front engine. You're a rear engine. Well, now. That could be interesting. Rear engine, rear wheel drive, maybe? That would be an interesting design to go with. You know what, let's, let's do that rear engine, rear wheel drive idea as an experimental. Now the real question here is, do I want to go with a boat? Or not a boat? Uh, for right now we'll go with the boat. Why not? After all, we're designing this thing in the American market. So let's give it a bit more of a slope there. Let's pull that back a little bit. angle there. We'll pull this back a little. Make it a little bit less boat-like, a little sleeker. Here we go. We are using the four-door version, thank you. Ladder chassis. Again, we're going to go with galvanized steel. Um, I think we're stuck. Now, let's try the transverse with a McPherson semi-trailing as typical and a steel body type. And we're going to go with our typical headlight layout here. And I know, I know, I know. I spend, like, no time on this. But, you know, guys, that's because, honestly... My favorite part of building these vehicles isn't the aesthetics, it's everything else. Now this vehicle, however, we're going to do this. No. Give me some of these, will ya? There we go. So we're going to try and do this with a front wheel drive engine. And that's going to create a little, some issues, I have no doubt of that. So this thing is going to be the baseline. And I want to see something here. We could fit... What the heck is the pine? Is that my four cylinder? Yes, it is. That is my four-cylinder engine. Um, yeah, let's, let's start it off with a Pine Eco. And I'm actually going to switch this up 
to reduce the weight a little. Give myself a bit more quality. A bit less quality, excuse me. We're still sitting at 92. But I'm thinking Oh, the engine switched back. Hold on. I'm going to do this shenanigan again. No, I don't want to do this. I need to duplicate the engine first and then I can do this. All right. Duplicate the engine. We'll switch to this. 1 2 Three, four, five. Now it's odd that it's letting me change this information here. But it's not letting me change the block material, it's letting me change the head, but not the block. Which I think is interesting. But so here we go. We have a new 70 era engine variation. Okay. So I suspect what we can do here is I can actually go, if we're using the eco, okay. So just by going with we can't quite switch the hyper hyper yeah all right let's hold the design there shall we so we're going to switch over to the hyper and then we're going to switch into here and we're going to retard its timing It's simply a worse engine design by the looks of it. Let's revert. Alright. Now, one thing I can do is I can actually go up to I-Beam Steel. So we're up here, we have cast, right? And let's hold that. Switch to I-Beam Steel. There we go. And we're at 91.6, so we could build this thing to a regular gasoline standard, but I don't think we're going to. What we're going to do instead is we're going to give ourselves some better ignition timing and a bit better RPM limit. And can I give myself a little bit less fuel mixture there? Okay, so we've made a marginally more efficient engine. We can actually go up to a performance intake, but we won't bother with that for the Eco Clone. All right. Now if I go straight through, what can I... the first flow...
So there we go, we're pushing 148 horsepower to this little four-cylinder engine. Which isn't bad, actually. Nice small little engine. Alright. So this is a family car. Three-speed automatic. Can only get up to about 115 miles an hour, which is actually not bad. Um, all things considered. Now, if I remember correctly, my Camry... Yeah. Had 13s on it. Now this is our baseline, so we're going with steel. And let's do solid front drum rear. That sounds about right. No undercladding. Cooling airflow, what is required here? 148 kgs, kjs. So, let's come back here using our typical workflow, and we're going to put a grill on this thing. There we go. back out to here, and we required, what, 148? That should do the trick. Five seat, standard, a bit better there, standard power steering, and we'll go again with advanced 70s. Again, we're going, um, let's do... Progressive. Gas mono two. Now we'll do twin two passive normal. Well, we went with drivability thirty right off the bat. That's not bad. Um, <laughs> that's not bad at all. All right. So wheel spin. We got a little bit going on, but not much. Good. Uh, tires. Engines okay. Brake fades an issue as always. So we'll take care of that now. You'd think I'd learn just to deal with the brake fade. Yeah, alright, so that's still not... And we actually, I think... Well, if we look at our wheels again... There we go. We can go with these 15s, right? And then we can come back to somewhere. Here, we can make this a little bit bigger. So we still have way more pull on the front than we should in the back, but that's neither here nor there. All right, so let's take a look back at detail stats and detail stats. All right. Uh, drivability performance, they don't care about power steering. We have it, so they don't care about it. Bottom out, whatever. Oversteer, understeer. I don't know why I'm losing out to that, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, they like the engine. They don't like the tires. But okay, I don't know why. Still have some wheel spin, driver height issues, suspension options, roll angle. So there's nothing really killing us here. Well, of course there's nothing killing us. We have a 40.1 drivability on this car. Uh, understeer could be corrected, so let's look at that now.
You know, I think this honestly wins the award for the least, the least uh, driver-friendly vehicle. All right, diesel stats. What don't they like about Sportiness, by the way? Driver says they hate the engine, they hate the understeer, the gearbox they think s sucks, basically. The coefficient of drag sucks. Yeah, they just don't like this car at all. Um, <laughs> they're like, just get us away from that thing, will ya? They don't like the pad type. And they're not thrilled about passenger space or entertainment, but that's neither here nor there. Safety isn't phenomenal. Chassis material's biting me in the butt on that one. Practicality, um, really good on practicality, actually. Utility. Yeah, that's a brake capacity issue. Yep, yeah, alright. They don't like that that much. That's fine. Economy is 15.9. Alright, so let's take a good look at the markets. Uh, somehow this thing is rating in as family sport. I don't know how. And sport budget. Let's take a look more at this. I'm winning on Pony, I'm winning on Family Sport. I'm winning on Sport Budget. Uh, family Utility Premium I'm winning. Family Premium I'm barely winning, but I'm cheaper. Uh, family I'm winning, but I'm more expensive. So, yeah. I'm winning on Commuter too, apparently. So this is going to be a pretty nice vehicle, because I'm... I'm losing on Family Support Premium, and I'm losing on City Premium. But we can probably fix that in an upcoming model with this car. Because... Yeah. Okay. So let's save this out. And now... Let's do... Let's copy the baseline. There we go. So baseline clone. We'll call this the... For, we'll call this the and the ES Enhanced Sport. Actually, we'll do one better. We'll call it the ESI. And we're actually going to clone the Eco. Eco clone clone. We'll call this the Sport Tune. Hopefully, the game will yitch at me over that. Will it save? Huh, it saved. Okay, so with this one, we're going to switch things up a bit. Because we are actually going to switch over to a mechanical injection system. Yes, it's $300 more expensive. And this is going to be the Sport Tune I. And we're still using regular leaded at 92. But what we're going to do is we're going to go up to Performance. Notice how much extra, by the way, we have down here? And we're push, going to push a lot more power out of this engine, too. Because what we can do now is... We've increased this a little bit. But we can come back over to our compression ratios, right? We can kick our compression up. And give us a little more cam profile there. So we're pushing a decent amount more horsepower now at a higher compression. And actually, this might even be more fuel efficient when I think about it. We still go with? Nope. Now, let's also look over here. Because we can probably set... Yeah, we're going to have to stick with the reverse flows, I think. Unless we just go to no second muffler at all. Nah, we'll keep with the... We'll keep with the two reverse flows. 
Let's see how this thing looks. Not too shabby, actually. Not too shabby at all. All right, so let's see now in the in the ESI model what we're looking at. Drivability dropped out because we have some more understeer oversteer issues because our weight distribution changed. Uh, they're not too unhappy about the gearbox anymore, and engine they're not happy about. I don't know why they're not happy about the engine, but that's neither here nor there. Safety is a bit safer, comfort's a bit lower, sportiness went up. That's amazing. Oh, because we went down there and top speed went a little bit up. So let's take a look at the gearbox because now we have some more fixes. Uh, apparently our top speed actually dropped, even with the more powerful engine. Uh, that's fine. We're a bit less fuel efficient, however. Okay, so, we're going to switch over to a manual with a 4-speed. And we're going to switch this up to sport compound roads right and over here yeah okay we're gonna have to go to a double piston front and then we're gonna go race And then we're also going to go up to race over here. We can decrease the size a little bit. Okay. Uh, how are we looking back here, by the way? Um, we're still having some grip issues. Let's fix the suspension first by going back to a sport layout. And That seems to be a good balance right there. Alright. So now... We want to go back to here. Let's also check our detail stats. They don't like the driver assist, they don't like the engine, you know, I don't I'm not even certain the ESI is going to be a salvageable design. So what you will do? Let's do this. We'll copy the baseline out. Then we'll redo this as a LE edition. That will work better. Alright, so let's go to our Sport Tune I for its engine. We lost a bit of drivability. Yes, computer, I understand this. Uh, okay, we lost a bit of drivability, and now I could delete the ESI model. Thank 
Thank you. And let's see what happened with our drive ability. Cornering went down, understeer oversteer issues, gearbox improved. Tires are the same. Engine, they don't like the engine as much. I don't know why. Wheel spin issues, roll angle, braking distance. Okay. Uh, comfort went down. Now, there we go. And uh, top speed, spacing, quality. Right, we're back to this issue now. So we'll switch up to a two piston. Because it doesn't honestly cost us that much more. There we go. And can I comfortize these pads a bit? Uh, a little bit. Let's come back over to here. And let's look at the fact that we're making these things a little bit better. So we're going to go up to premium here. Make the quality just a bit better. Apparently they didn't like increasing the safety. Okay, and now we can go up a bit here with the gas monotube. And we're just going to make sure we're still set to normal. Okay. Right, I forgot about that. I don't know why I have tremendous issues with my camber here, but... Alright, that looks like the best we can do. Let's get, put that up a little bit. Remember, this is our luxury. Well, sort of luxury-ish. Okay, detail stats. So drivability's up. Let's see if there's anything obvious we can fix. Gearbox. If they like the fixtures quality, they don't like the brake balance or the brake fade, but that's neither here nor there. Um, engine, tires. Roll angle, wheel load, wheel is good. Driver height's good. Suspension options are good. Good. Sportiness. Yeah, that's not gonna... It just doesn't like that at all. They just don't like that at all. But that's neither here nor there because we actually have a pretty decent vehicle. I think. Markets. We're competing in Family Utility Premium. We're competing in Family Premium, though we're not quite as uh, inexpensive as our next runner-up. It's marginal, and we are more desirable. Um, premium Budget. We're less desirable but cheaper. Commuter premium, we are less desirable, but way cheaper. City premium, we are more desirable and a little less cheap. And fun premium, we are more desirable. And somehow we're even ranking in muscle commuter, which we're too expensive for, but we're actually doing really well at. So that's good to see. All right, so you guys actually got a two for today. You got two separate vehicles, a luxury edition and a standard edition. It's luxury in big, giant air quotes, guys. Those are some 
big, 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 big air quotes. Anyways, this has been Mr. Kassarian. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give me a like, a comment, and or a subscription. Let me know you're out there, and let me know that you are enjoying what I'm doing. Leave a comment. Give me a... Give me a comment on what you guys want to see me build next. Um, probably won't be able to re respond to it for a couple days because, well, I'm in Ireland and I'm pre-recording a lot while I still have internet access while I'm up here. Uh, I'm We're switching over to Scotland on Friday. I'm recording this on... What day is today? Vacation-itis is kicking in. Uh, I'm recording this on... Wednesday. So on Friday we're flying over to Scotland and I won't have set stable internet access while I'm over there. So I'll have to, uh, I probably won't be able to connect and stuff. I won't, won't be able to upload. So just let me know what you think, what you want me to build next. Uh, if you do, that stuff will go on the list and it will probably go out there uh, when I get back, which would be after July 11th. So thank you so much for watching. This has been Mr. Kassarian. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, good luck building.